Hello everybody, this is the Bulldozer and thank you for giving me your time and thank you for watching another one of my videos. Here we go with the very last challenge, day number 7 for the leftovers and again another easy challenge. I guess that's one good thing you could say with all these challenges we're getting, like on Thursdays we get 15 challenges on that one day alone. With them being easy, it's not that hard to complete them. But if you have not seen this video yet folks, check this out. 17 Brutes in one game. This is not a joke. The video speaks for itself. Now this is just clips of this video. You will find the video in the end screen. But just look at all these red streaks coming in. 17 Brutes in an 18 minute game is absolutely insane. Then in their notes, it says something about that if a brute remains in the storm and nobody gets in it, it's going to respawn it. So are you respawning that brute in on top of the ones you're already sending in? Is that the reason why there was 17 brutes spawned into this game? This is just pathetic. They need to fix it. If nothing else, lower the health and lower the amount of rockets it shoots. And it might be a little more tolerated. If you would, please consider using my code Mr. Boulders or Gaming. Every time I receive a payout from Epic Games, I will be doing a give, a give back. Have it be V-Bucks, have it be a skin, only time will tell, depends on the amount. If you do use my code, please send me a picture. It looks like this. At the bottom there it says, this purchase helps support Mr. Boulders of Gaming. Not only will we receive a shout out in a future video, but I'm also going to get a bunch of these put together. I'll make a video just of the people that has helped support the channel, as well as you will get your name listed below. I don't know how long... I might rotate this out maybe once a month or so, and maybe I'll just keep them down there until I receive a payout from Epic Games. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. There's already one name down there, uh, Ezzy Gamer, I think what it is, but your name could be next. Back to this challenge here. Also, you're going to want to stay tuned to the end of this video because something very, very strange um, happened during the gameplay. I get six of these chests in one game and have to go back for one more chest, one more chest. It's just crazy. But, yeah, make sure you stay tuned to the end of this video because I got something to show you that I think is absolutely hilarious. And it kind of makes you wonder if Epic Games did on purpose because there is no such thing as a coincidence when you're talking about Epic Games and Fortnite. As always, I recommend you doing these challenges in Team Rumble. Team Rumble is the best place to go because of the fact that you got 20 people on one side of the board, 20 people on the other side, so you got 40 as opposed to 100, and your bus is on one side and their bus is on the other. So you can see here we got the entire Frosty Flights to ourselves. There's only 20 of us. A lot of us are going to be going there, but again, 20 people as opposed to 100 people when you're fighting for the chest. This makes a lot more sense to do these challenges in Team Rumble. Now because there is just so many chests located at Frosty Flights, which is another reason why you should go to Frosty Flights as opposed to Salty Springs, it's because there is so many more chests at Frosty Flights. And don't stop looking. You're going to see here, folks, you know, somebody actually uses the, the junk rift and takes up the whole center of the building. But I'm going to pick up a um, slurp. And right, so you can see where somebody used the junk rift right there. I'm going to pick up the slurp and I'm going to, I'm going to do some more searching in the storm. And you can see by me doing that. I almost get every one of these chests. If I could have found just one more chest, I would have been good to go. One thing I do want to say is uh, if you take the zip line and you go up top, none of those chests up there count, and I'll show you proof of that. I'm going to leave that clip in the video. But again, just make sure you go through and you search every room. Even if you see doors open, still go search because just because there's a door open does not mean that nobody search that location they might have just went in and went back out and don't know you have to go around the corner you know so again just make sure you search the place thorough if you're playing team rumble you're not going to die you're just going to respond to wherever the circle is so at least spend your entire health trying to find these chests so you can get these chests done as we go upstairs i'm looking don't see nothing 
And again, I'm just going to keep looking. Because see, somebody took this out, so I'm going to build up. And I'm going to go upstairs. And this is a prime example of what I'm talking about. If you look on the mini-map, it's just me and one other person, maybe two other people. It looks like they might be on top of each other. And I'm going to go upstairs, and I'm going to find yet another chest. Now, if I wouldn't have done that, that would have been one more chest that I have to try to find in my next game. Because this place is pretty well, you know, searched. Everything's already gone, been gone through and everything. But again, it doesn't hurt to search the area throughout. Now, let me show you what I was talking about as opposed to um, riding a zip line up. Okay, storm's closing in. I'm going to go ahead and ride this zip line up top. At this building up here, there's a chest in this corner. You can see somebody's already searched it. But when I look at that little bunker, where you want to call it, I notice the door is still down on it. And there's usually a chest inside there. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And remember, I'm sitting at 6 of 7 right now. So I'm going to open this chest up, and I get no indicator. So I take a look, and I see, yes, I'm still sitting at 6 of 7. So the chest up top there do not count. Now I forgot to say this at the beginning of this video. When you come into frosty flights there is one chest that's like tucked away in a corner and either you have to land on it or you got to take the steps to get up to it it's like right in the middle of the iceberg hit that chest first because if you notice the first game I came in that was the first chest I got and you're gonna see again I'm gonna hit this chest right here again there's just no way going to it so that's a, a guaranteed one of your chests and one is all I need. So there we go. My challenge is completed. All seven days of the leftover challenges have been completed. And now we can move on to the end of the game. But don't forget, I still have that special clip come up I want to show you. And something um, really strange. Congratulations, you have received a reward for completing the search chest at Salty Springs or Frosty Flights. Objective inside the leftovers mission and 2,000 XP is what you will get when you fl finish this off finally. And as you can see here, everything is done. All five columns has got 100% on them. So we are ready for our brand new set of challenges coming out tomorrow. Now here comes this clip, folks. This is how you want to end a game. I'm going to come up out of the basement and I'm going to throw this junk rift because I can see these people obviously just close these walls up and smack. Get a nice kill. But there's something I want to show you. Take a look at the kill that I got. Look where that arrow is pointing. It says, sent Raging Bear 29 to the Jurassic period. It makes you wonder. You got a car that also comes out of this junk rift. You've got a portlet that comes out of the junk rift, and you've got a anchor that comes out of the junk rift. What do those things say? Now folks, here, here is the clip I was talking about. I'll go ahead and let this finish playing out. I would have actually got two kills, but uh, just before the, the dinosaur hit the ground, my teammate killed one of the people. So again, you see the game is over with. Now let's take a look at this picture of the back of the dinosaur, which you can't see in this image right here. Here is the back of the dinosaur, and I did not draw this in at all. And actually, I'll show you proof I didn't draw this in. Take a look. Now here's a snapshot from back in the middle of the game, and you can see everything that's on top of this dinosaur is exactly how it is in the picture I showed you. All right, now let's go back and look at the original picture that I showed you. Now here is the original picture that I showed you. And I think the makers over at Fortnite is trolling people. Because you can clearly see two eyes and a mouth. Here, take a look at this picture. Does that make it a little more clearer for you? You can clearly see two eyes and a mouth. And that looks like it is laughing at you. Because you was just killed by the junk rift. I think it's absolutely hilarious. You know, 
they do stuff like this, and I'm a sole believer that there is no such thing as a coincidence. So unless somebody can come up with some other ideal on reason why this would be like this, please tell me. And actually, you could even take and draw some hair above the ammo for the shotgun there. So it looked like he had a goatee. I think it's just absolutely hilarious. I love to come across stuff like this. It's that little extra something something that Fortnite puts in the game that makes the game kind of fun. Now, apparently, I, th I think I heard somebody say that this junk rip is supposed to help you with the brute. The only problem is you can the brute can easily move away from the junk rift before this stuff starts falling because it shoots a, a rift beam up into the sky so if they see that they they can simply just jump before it lands now the way it works is that it does 200 damage so you really do not stand a chance at this thing because you can only have 200 damage 100 health 100 shield but if it doesn't land directly on you or close enough to you, it's going to bounce you back and still do 100 damage to you. It will knock you back and still do 100 damage to you. It doesn't make a difference which one it is, the car, the anchor, the portalette, or the dinosaur. They're all going to do massive, massive amounts of damage. As well as just doesn't make a difference what kind of structure you're using, even the metal structure, it just goes right through it. If you're in a building, it goes all the way through the building. So even over at the um, the block right now, you have that huge metal structure, and it goes from the top all the way down to the bottom. And when you look up underneath it, you can just see a shaft going all the way up the building. It's kind of hilarious, but there's nothing to stop these things and again somebody said epic released a statement i didn't go look for it if they did they did they did they didn't or i should say they didn't they didn't but it's neither here nor there but as opposed to this being a a tool to go to fight against the brutes i don't think so um, for sure, if there's nobody in a brute and you want to drop this on a brute to destroy the brute, you can do that because it's always going to drop some materials for you. It's going to drop some weapons. It's going to drop some ammo. It's going to drop some. Um, I, don't, I don't know if it's. I think it's wood and brick. I saw here. I don't think I've seen any metal. There could be. I, I would assume so. That there's going to be metal there also. But again, I think it's absolutely hilarious. And let me know what you think down below. Have you noticed this before? Also, what do you think about the brute? I mentioned it earlier in the video. If they would take and lower the health from a thousand to five hundred, and they would take and you know get rid of some of the rockets, so it's not shooting so many rockets, so you actually have a chance against it. I think you know it would be a lot more tolerable, and people wouldn't. They would still be mad. They wouldn't be as mad. But I was playing a game with a friend of mine, uh, Mr. Joker. Actually, I'll put a link to his YouTube channel in the bottom. And I'd never seen him before, and they had two people on the same team, had two of the mechs. They was over at the plant, and they was floating in midair. I thought they was glitched out when I first saw it, but they was literally floating in midair because if you go into the, into the center of the plant area where the robot used to be, and it just goes in and automatically shoots you up and your umbrella or a glider, whatever you're using, will pop out. And these things were literally just floating in midair, just tearing people up. Good thing is that it makes them a little easier to kill. And really, we didn't have too, too much of a problem taking them out. But still, they do a lot of damage beforehand. Just one fire of a rocket will be enough to take you out. So that's my thoughts. Tell me what you think down below. Don't forget, if you would, please consider using Mr. Boilers or Game Manager as your support credit code. Because I do give back every time I receive a payout from Epic Games. There will be a V-Buck or a skin giveaway. But again, only time will tell. 
Hope you enjoyed the video you just watched. On the left-hand side of your screen is the Fortnite playlist on the right-hand side of the previous video I uploaded. If you did enjoy this video, please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for more content. And if you want to make a purchase in the store, please use Mr. Bulldozer Gaming. I really appreciate it, and every time I receive a payout from Epic Games, I do a give back. This is the Bulldozer. Get your killing on, and I'm out of here.